I started the show today saying, you know, all you folks rooting against LeBron in Cleveland, you do realize that if he leaves Cleveland and goes to Philadelphia or Houston or Los Angeles, those teams going to be really – can you imagine Covington, Embiid, Simmons, Dario Saric, and LeBron James? That's a pretty good club. That's a good – <laughs> look, what you have to hope for is that he doesn't leave the East because the East will – at least for one more year, at least until Philadelphia – with Embiid and Ben Simmons comes of age. and Because they will be, I think they can be a great team eventually, and they'll be an exciting, compelling team. Yes. Without them and without LeBron in the East, there is no compelling team. I mean, Kyrie Irving is very exciting, and Gordon Hayward, he'll come back. But that's not that compelling. No. Nobody, look. I love Toronto and what they're doing. Dwayne Casey may be coach of the year. But nobody wants to see them in the finals. I'm sorry. Networks don't want to see them no, in the finals. You no. think ESPN is rooting for Toronto in the finals? God, they are no. rooting hard for LeBron and the Cavs <laughs> to make the finals. If he goes to the West, the finals will really become just a mess. It really will. It'll be it'll be a, from the it'll East, be a bowl game. With one team being favored by 17 points. Yeah. It'll be a bad bowl game. The Western Conference playoffs will be incredible, but the finals will not be fun. Um, so I'm watching the Lakers and Julius Randle. Now, I got a I got a theory here. So I went back and looked. First of all, I always like Julius Randle better than everybody else in L.A. I said he's the only guy that doesn't have to wear skinny jeans on this roster. <laughs> there's there's a place in the NBA for Dennis Rodman and Ben Wallace and Charles Oakley and Julius Randle. Not that skilled. Tough guys. They can create their own points. They can't shoot threes. But the Lakers are a finesse team to the point of exhaustion. Randle's their bouncer at the bar. He's the bouncer at the nice club, and I like him. That said... It seems awfully suspicious that they've doubled his minutes and his touches in the last several months. To me, it looks like they're trying to say, okay, hey, everybody, Julius Randle can really play. <laughs> He's fantastic. I don't know if they could pull off a sign and trade, but why suddenly have the Lakers heavily promoted? Are they, are they, because they know they can't get LeBron if they pay Julius Randle. They can't yeah. get. I mean, what is what are they doing with this? Well, look, they've had injuries, all right? But since January 1st, Randall has played incredibly well. 18 points, 9 rebounds, 57% shooting, and we know their record is something like 19 and 12 over that stretch. So he's played great basketball. What I was told when Luke went to the Lakers, Luke Walton, he wanted to kind of incorporate the Golden State style. Right. And there was a feeling that Randall could kind of be like that Draymond Green type guy. Now, he can't shoot, and he doesn't shoot threes for the most part, but he is skilled. Yeah. As, as big and husky and tough as he is, as much of a brawler, he can handle the ball, he can push it on the break, he can pass, and he can score in the paint. So he, I think he's just beginning to... Come of age. Okay. I mean, remember what this guy was in college. He was a, he's a high lottery pick. Oh, yeah. So I, I don't think they're show. Look, it's uh, always good to quote unquote showcase a guy, but I don't think that was their plan. Let's put Julius out there and get him traded. Okay. I think he's just actually played really well for him, and it shows the fact that they're winning. Yeah. Uh, okay. So there's a big difference between great and valuable. Blake Griffin's a great talent. <laughs> The Clippers are now better without him, and the Pistons are awful with him. Um, we know Kevin Durant's remarkable. He's one of the best basketball players in my life. He's not as valuable as Steph Curry. I went back and looked this morning since Katie arrived with the Warriors and has missed games. They're like 25 and 5. <laughs> okay, I watched them last night, and you watched them without Steph Curry. They're not the same team. This is why... Kevin Durant caught flack when he went to Golden State. And you and I didn't give him flack. I was fine with his decision. But they don't need him. They, they won a championship without you. They won 73 games. And I'm not, I'm not trying to poo-poo on Cleveland's championship. Right. But if Draymond Green's not suspended, very few people <laughs> believe they, they don't win that, that series. Okay. So they they could they were the best team for the last two years without you. So he goes there. Yeah, they they don't need him as great as he is. I've said it all along. He is their best player. Yes. Period. But he's not but their Ste no. He's not their most valuable. Steph is the most valuable. He's the most important. I look this year. They're seven and zero 
with Steph playing and no KD. In those seven games, they average 123 points a game. They win by 19 points a game. Without KD. Without KD. They play at the fastest pace in the league. When KD is there and no Steph, 11 and 5, they average 105 points a game. They win by five points. Right? That may have even changed because of these night. last two losses. And they play at the 27th fastest pace in the league. Chris, this is great. This, you did a great job here. This is what I say about Gronk. Gronk's great. But when Gronk gets hurt for New England, they play a different game. <laughs> They're like, okay, we're not going to play this lumber. We're going to speed it up. No, no huddle. Slot receivers. So Gronk gets hurt, and you're like, he's great. Gronk's not valuable to the Patriots. Belichick's brain is, and Brady's arm is. Okay, yeah. Gronk's great. He's not. By the way, OBJ in New York. When he has over 100 yards, they have a losing record. He's great. But what happens with OBJ is Eli Manning gets glued on him because yep. he knows if I don't throw the ball to OBJ, he's going to come to the sidelines and bark. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's very interesting is that those numbers are remarkable. When they don't have Steph, they play like most other teams. You know, KD has the ball a lot in his hands, and he's great. Look, without Steph, they would be a very good team. I would think you take Houston over them. But they'd be right there with everybody else, so they'd be elite. But with Steph, Steph, Steve Kerr said it a couple months ago. He has not seen a player make de defenses adjust to him ever like Steph Curry does. His range is out to 35 feet, but he also can handle the ball, can finish in the mid-range, can finish at the rim, can pass. Anyone else who's been close to as good a shooter as Steph Curry in the history of this league has pretty much just been a shooter. He can shoot like that and do everything else offensively, and he moves without the ball. He's constantly moving. So he is their system. He changes everything. He is their MVP, no question. By the way, were you at the Laker game last night? I was not. Okay. I was uh, flying into town. Okay, so. well, there's a, you know, there's a lot of this and there's a lot of that. So we've always had the LeBronzo meter, which LeBron, by the way, has referenced before. He has referenced He, he doesn't it. call it the LeBronzo meter. He calls it the meter thing. So he's obviously <laughs> seen it on the show. So I do believe Cleveland is where he would, in a perfect world, like. I mean, listen, the kid moved back. He went from aqua water in Miami to Cleveland. He likes Cleveland. Most people don't move Miami to Cleveland if they have options. They go Cleveland and they vacation and retire in Miami. Yeah. But I now we got those three. Other, if I said today, L.A., Philly, Houston. So forget Cleveland. They're the favorite. And let's say they're a 50 they're a 60% favorite. How would you divvy up the other 40% Sixers, Lakers? It's, I mean, it's so hard to say right now because the, you have to wait to how things play out. If Houston wins it, he's not going there. And he's not going to Golden State, obviously. So, you know, Philadelphia, how do they do in the playoffs? How does Cleveland do in the playoffs? You know, I mean, they don't look that great right now, but remember, they get Kevin Love back. If, yes. they, if they look great in the playoffs, you know, and run through the East and play whoever comes out of the West tough, that could change things. You know, I've covered LeBron in two of his, his two free agencies. Yeah. And nobody knows right now what his choices are. What his, I mean, we can talk about teams that make sense and all that. But to say if this is his second choice, this is his third choice, nobody knows at this point. I got to be honest. Philadelphia gets mad at me. But, man, Simmons, Embiid, Covington, Dario Saric, LeBron. Oh, it'd be, it, <laughs> it, it would be a lot of fun. And, again, I think it'd be best for the league if he stays in the East. And if you're LeBron, you can say, look, I can lead these guys to some championships as the best player. And as I age, then – as MB becomes the best player or whatever, I can still win more championships with them as the second or third best player. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.